Okay, everyone, thank you for joining. <coughs> what we're going to do today is we're going to do a synopsis, an overview of the Dvar Malchus Parshas Achre Mois Kedoshim from the year Tav Shinon Aleph. These are very, very fundamental sikhs. Tazriya, Metzayra, Achre Mois Kedoshim, Emer. Laying the foundation and deep understanding of what Geul is all about. Okay. So in Perak Aleph, in Sif Aleph, the Rebbe began with uh, speaking about, uh, regarding this that we discussed earlier, regarding the, uh, the Geula, that we're waiting, for, we're waiting for Mashiach, we're hoping for Mashiach to come every moment. And it's a actually halacha, how strong is that waiting, that if someone makes a neder, that he will not drink any wine, on the day that Mashiach comes, he immediately has to stop drinking wine <coughs> because today could be the day that Mashiach is coming. That's how quickly it can happen. It doesn't have to be preceded by wars of Gaigo Mago. You know, Allah says that all these things don't have to have. Mashiach can just come. So being that, we're waiting for Mashiach to come. And, but not only that, uh, there is a, the, what the Rebbe had spoken earlier about the importance of waiting every second for his arrival, but also this, that every single person has to do something to bring Mashiach. That was the toichen of the Chav Ches Nisan Sicha, that, they, that the, the Rebbe said, I'm giving over responsibility of bringing Mashiach to each and every one of you. It's our responsibility to do something. And then in Pashas Tazriya Metzayr, he explained that it's in addition to just plain Isaf and Torah Mitzvahs, particular special emphasis on learning in Yon Geula Mashiach, that we have to study the, learn, the ideas of Geula Mashiach, which we're actually doing right now. And, and it should be all be done with the intention to bring the Giyula. So therefore, he says, now is the right time to be misakiv for us to take some time to appreciate what Geula is. And once we know what Geula is, we'll understand what is the Avaida that one needs to do in order to, two things, in order to bring the Giyula, in order to prepare for the Giyula. So everything is always expressed in its name. So the name of the coming of Mashiach is called Geula. Redemption is called Geula. And it, but it's not the only name of Geula, the Rebbe says. There are many names that we use for Geula. Actually, there are, uh, uh, Pesach by night, we drink four cups of wine. Each one corresponds to another Lashon of Geula. Yet we say, so there is, Vaitzesi, I will take you out. Like we say, Yetzias Mitzrayim. There is Geula Mitzrayim, there's Yetzias Mitzrayim. Same as of this going out of this Gauls, the Yetzia from Gauls, the exiting from Gauls. Um, and then there is Vitzalti, uh, I wish to save them. And then there's Vlokachti, Vahevesi, I will take you, I will bring you. Yet, the most prominent Lushen that we use regarding the Giyula, especially regarding the, what we, the Rebbe refers to as Gula, Mites Vashlema, is we call it the Giyula. Like we, throughout all of all the history, people always finished every drasha. They would say, we should be to the Giyula Shlema, shlema to the perfect Giyula, the complete redemption. Not always Giyula. The Rebbe brings actually in the Ha'ara, in the, the, the Nigin, Zolshen Zayn the Giyula, is the way you didn't sing and express there. They're, they're yearning and they're, they're, they're waiting for Mashiach. Zolshein Zayn de Giyula. So we use the word Giyula. From all the Lashayness, that became the most prominent um, um, word to speak about the redemption. So we have to say that this particular word expresses something about redemption, brings out the Mohus of Giyula, of redemption, more than anything else. So he says, what is unique about the word Geula? He says, you see that Geula has in it a, 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 a mamash adavar pella, a wondrous thing, something that's, that's like really astonishing. What's astonishing? That the word Geula is comprised primarily from the word Geula. Geula, Geula. The Gimel, Vav, Lamed, He from the word Geula is the same, <coughs> is, it spells the word Geula. The only difference between, between the two is an addition of an Aleph. You add an Aleph right after the Gimel, it becomes Geula instead of Geula. Which, which that itself, the Rebbe says, is very telling. That is amazing. Now, this is not just something the Rebbe says, I am making up, even though the Rebbe making up something is not making up. It's revealing a deep truth about Torah. The Rebbe says, this is what it actually says in Medrash. On the Pasuk, in, 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 um, in uh, where is it, in uh, Zechariah, there's a Pasuk that we say, Torah, that we say on Shabbos Hanukkah. I think we say, Pashas Baaloyzcha, we say that of Torah. It says that I saw a menorah, Zav Kula, Vagula al Raisha. And there was a bowl on top of the menorah. The bowl was pour, pouring oil. He had a vision of this menorah, and there was a, a bowl that was tilted, and it was pouring oil into the menorah. So the word that it's used for the bowl is Gula. So the Medrash says, two Pirushim, what this represents. According to one Pirush, it means Vagula is referring to Gaila, referring to the Gulas. 
that this Navua was some, coming to show him something about the exile. And then uh, the other Pirush is that it means Geula. The Geula Arosha, which means that these two are related to each other. If there are two Pirushim in the same word, the Rebbe actually learned that out from a Rashi this week in the Parsha. This week in the Parsha, we learn about the, uh, yesterday's Chumash. It says, you know, Beget Shatnes, that you're not allowed to have Shatnes. You know, Loyala Alecha, Beget Shatnes. So, what is the word Shatnes? We learn out the Alechus of Shatnes from different Perushim in the word Shatnes. Shatnes, it means different things. You take all three, you combine them together. So, if Gul, so the same would apply over here as well. Like the Rebbe, it's one of the very fundamental teachings of the Rebbe. The Rebbe always uses it. He says, when there's two pirushim in one word, they have a shaykhas one to each other. And again, he derives it from the shatnas thing. So the same over here. In one word, you have two pirushim, goyla and geula. And, but you find Chazal actually say it on the word gula, that it means that it's referring to geula. So you say that the two are connected. So what is that? So the Rebbe says, you do have the pirush, the, 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 the explanation, which is actually an explanation of the Alter Rebbe. And the Kuti Torah, Pashas Baloischa, the Alter Rebbe explains, and then later in the Tzemach Tzedek, and so on and so forth, expound on this idea that Goyla and Geula is the same in it's just that when you insert the Aleph, and what's the Aleph? Excuse me, the Aleph is the Alufa Shaloyla. When you bring the Aleph, the chief of the world, the Abish there, into Golas, you have Geula. Becomes Golas, becomes Geula. So now the Rebbe asks, we, don't, we need to understand, what is this Teichen? What does this mean? Geula and Goyla are total anti. And to, antithetical to each other. They're total opposites. Goyla is a terrible thing, a state, a state of existence where the Abishter and everything that's true and holy and godly is concealed and blocked. Geula is when the Abishter is revealed, and as a result of that, everything holy and goodness is revealed in the world, and there's no more pain and suffering. So you couldn't have two extremes that are more opposing and detrimentally opposed one to the other. And how can one word mean the epitome of darkness and sadness and pain, and the same thing mean the epitome of joy and happiness and light. Doesn't make any sense. It's two in Yanim. And to go from Goyla to Gula means to experience the greatest metamorphosis and transformation that has ever been. And yet we say it's one word. So in Pere Gimel, the Rebbe says, What's the explanation? He says, Gula does not mean the abandonment of the Golos. It's not like we run away. There was Golos. And then we pick ourselves up and we escape the Golos and we run to a different place. We run to a, you know, we're running to Disney World. <laughs> we're running to, to a place where there's going to be full of, 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 of happiness and the happiest place on earth, like they say. Yeah, so you're running away. Like a person escaping from their, from their problems to a place where there's no more sorrow, no more pain. That is not, and that's usually a case. Most people that they had a problem, they had something oppressing them and then, you know, some, something happened and was able to release them, take them out of that pain, take them out of that suffering. And hopefully, as time will pass, they will heal by forgetting the troublesome times. A person is able to go, look, after the Second World War, people were in the, you know, people went through the Holocaust. The horrors were so deep that you weren't able to forget the emesis. Uh, and obviously, it it's also relates, it's also um, relative. Some people who were mamish in the camps and, 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 and witnessed the worst of the worst as we went to Auschwitz and things like that. And these are people that Taka never forgot at all, never able to like re pick themselves up and build themselves together. So I guess everything is relative. It's relative on the type of person and so on and so forth. But by even a lot of people were able to build a new life. And they don't want to think about the old life. And if anything, if it would show up in a night as a nightmare in their dreams, it was horrible. Well, that's a past that you want to forget. The Rebbe is explaining that the, the moving from Goyla to Gula, which by the way, Goyla includes even the horrible days of the worst persecutions, also included in Goyla. Goyla is, 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 is painfully the entire package. But the way, the, the, what Gula means is not a, a leaving of that behind to a new, brighter life, which of course that's true as well, but actually a... a Goyla means um, redemption. The meaning of Geula means redemption, which means redeeming the Golos. And the Rebbe is going to explain it on two levels. Redeeming the Golos means that those that were in exile, number one, are redeemed. And when we say they are redeemed, means that they took everything with them that was part of them during this exile period. All of what they had comes out. 
unlike certain times when someone escapes a situation, like you say, they barely escaped with their skin on their, on their bones. Right? Barely escaped. Begapa Yovay, Begapa Yetzay, went out alone. Like people, as we mentioned earlier, talk about the tragedy of 70 years ago. People came out of the camps alone. Nebach, their wives, their children, or their husbands and their family. Brothers, sisters perished. And they escaped barely alone. So that means they didn't take their pre... They weren't redeemed. They escaped. It wasn't redemption. A redemption means you are redeemed and everything you have is redeemed. Including in everything you have is actually also one's possessions. Like when Yidin went out of Mitzrayim, they went out with mitalis, as, as, as it says by Moshe Rabbeinu said, binoreinu bizkeneinu, the gantza meshbacha. Not only that, with all of our cattle, with all of our possessions, par sa'achad, even one, one hoof will not stay in Mitzrayim. Or like the Lashon, it says in Yeshaya Novi, kaspamu zahavam itam, their gold and their silver with them. Everything comes out and everything is redeemed. Or as the Rebbe explains in a greater emphasis, not in this, not in this week, Parshas Achri Kedoshim Sicha, but in next week's Sicha, Parshas Emor's um, Sicha is a continuation of this idea of Golos to Geula. And what Geula means, that Geula is a redemption of the Golos, that it doesn't only mean redeeming those that are trapped in Golos, but it actually even means redeeming the Golos itself. That the Golos itself is redeemed. That means that the, 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 very, the very powers of darkness, they also came along. Like we saw, by, again, it's not emphasized so much in this sikha, I'm just making mention of it. How strong this concept of goyla to geula is. That geula redeems the entire golas, even the, even the negative things of golas, in the sense that there is an ashapcha, as much as it's able to turn over, the inyanim of golas themselves turn over, like we see that the, 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 the very wealth of Mitzrayim, the Rechush Gadol of Mitzrayim, became the Rechush Gadol of, 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 of Bnei Yisrael. So we went on, what did we have? What was our, what was our fortune? How did Yidin begin life, not just begin life, take and, 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 and establish themselves? When they went out, for, first they went through the Midbar 40 years, then they came into Eretz Yisrael, they didn't start with nothing, they started as wealthy Jews, because they each Yid had 80 80 donkeys, which he took out of Mitzrayim, right? Of Libyan donkeys. These are, these are like Mercedes donkeys. These are like the best donkeys. Donkeys that were, that they were able to schlep a whole big load. And all of this was transferred. And even more than that, the Rebbe explains over in the next Sicha, that the heir of Rav also came along. That means that the, the actual <laughs> Goyim that were exp- uh, 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 oppressing them were also coming along. So that, that's the idea of, of, of Geula. Geula is a redemption of the previous process, of the previous situation. So the Yidin went out and their chelik bo'ilam, their portion in the world also came out. And including their achievements and accomplishments. It's one thing to take along possessions. It's another thing a person has accomplishments. Now you say, when Mashiach will come, a new world will start. And so who will I be? I'll be a nobody. I'm starting from scratch. Okay, it's a wonderful world. No tzadis. But, but, but look, I've, I'm losing my dignity. I'm losing my status. By the way, you should know that this whole sikha was said, the Rebbe makes mention to it later, in, in, in the end, that what happened was that after, at this time, in, 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 in Tavshin Nun Aleph, after the Rebbe demanded that Tut uh, al Kent, and also sikhas before that, where the Rebbe was very explicit, and so on and so forth, it started the, the, the movement of people identifying the Rebbe as Mashiach and, and, and so on and so forth. And the Rebbe's sikha started becoming far more Mashiach. Thing. And they, they started doing an, a, a, a signing Piskei Dinim that the Rebbe is Mashiach. And they started people signing in 770. And under, and under the nose, meaning people were still afraid, but halfway they started singing in front of the Rebbe, that Melech HaMashiach, Yechi, and this and that. And this started creating, uh, this sent, this rattled the nerves of shluchim around the world because people st- started going, leaking into the newspapers that Chabad is a messianic cult, right? They believe the Rebbe is Mashiach and so on and so forth. And people, shluchim, were getting very uncomfortable with it because people were asking them. And you guys were saying, here you are, are you really, do you have something up your sleeve? <laughs> you came over here, you started a shul, we all became your friends. And meanwhile, you're a messianic cult. You come, you're a missionary. You come in here to, you know, to convert us to your, uh, to your, to your cultish beliefs. So shluchim were becoming uncomfortable. 
So they sent into the Rebbe that, you know, this has to stop. I mean, they, didn't, they basically were writing to the Rebbe, what's, what's going on? This is ruining. We are here. We are your foot soldiers. We're here for, for, for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. We're Moisar Nefesh. We're building up. And now there's a Sakana. They're going to make one negative article about us. us and we're going to lose our supporters. We're going to lose our this. And that's what they wrote to the Rebbe. So the Rebbe, based on that, the Rebbe is addressing this. And the Rebbe is saying, that people are afraid that when the gula is going to come, they're going to lose. Ah, <laughs> it's funny. Why am I laughing? Because what the shluchim were afraid was not that the gula is going to come and they're not going to have, you know, the, the, the shluchim are afraid that what? That uh, the gula is not going to come. And we stay in Golas a little longer and the gula is not here. And people are going to say, hey, you know, you guys are, are, are believers in a Mashiach and it's not happening. That was what we're afraid. But the Rebbe is saying, I'm for real. It really is happening. Not that it's not happening. It is going to happen. And therefore, if it's going to happen, so you're afraid what? You're going to lose something? You're not going to lose anything. Because all these contacts and all your associates and all your friends and your whole Metzius that you built up, that you have a community, you're not going to lose that. Mashiach is going to come. You're going to take all those connections. You're going to take your entire Chabad house with the people, and you'll, these, these will be your people. It's only that it's gonna be, you're going to be able to do so much more with them. There's going to be, the relationship is going to be so much stronger. And their, their, their respect for you is only going to grow a millionfold because they're going to see so much more of who you really are because your talents are going to shine much more. And their support for you is going to go up even more. That's what the Rebbe is saying. Everything you had in Golas, you built something. You started a school. You're taking the school with you. It's not going to be, I'm okay, canceled your school. We don't need you already anymore. Nah. You have your Hebrew school. will be. But instead of just teaching Aleph base, you're going to teach Torah Seshel Mashiach. Torah Chadash Amiti You're going to teach the deepest Chassidus. Nothing. Your Chabad house, your, your school, your, your contacts, your political connections. Everything that you, that you built, that you're afraid that now, I don't know, a whole new Mashiach is going to come and wipe it all away. It's not true. We're picking you up together with everything that belongs to you, together with all your accomplishments, and we're transporting you into a new world of Mashiach, a world where everything can blossom and everything can be realized and expressed on a whole new level, or even better than that. We're not even taking a new world. We're shining light into the old world. So the old world is going to become a new world, but it's going to be the very same old world liberated into the new world. That's the idea of Giyula. And he says, all the inyanim, the Rebbe says, have a very powerful paragraph. Kol inyanim achiyuvim. All positive inyanim. Begolos nesharim gamalim. Chas v'shalom, someone has an illness. Chas v'shalom, someone has an illness. The illness is not going to come along. The illness is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to end. Someone has chas v'shalom, some other negative. A person has a, a habit. And the habit is a dangerous or an addiction. A bad addiction. That's not coming along. That's being left behind. But you don't want that. All the stuff that are, that are unhealthy and ungodly and, and, and negative in our lives, these things are going to stay behind. They're going to dissipate, this, uh, end. But everything positive and everything good is coming along. That's the idea. What's going to be, then what, but what is going to happen to all the good things that are now in Golos? But in a, or in a Gola state, is that the halomis vehestatim, the concealments and the blockages that are not allowing them to shine in their full, in their, with their full power and their full panemias, these things are going to dissipate. <coughs> and once, and, and therefore, they're only going to be so much stronger and so much greater. And the Rebbe adds another very important idea. Vahashibud ledarke hateva vagashmi yisoidom. The enslavement that comes from it. For instance, a person is a businessman. He has a good business. He's making a good parnasa, Baruch Hashem. He's doing very well. You know, whenever there's, you know, when now there's coronavirus, everybody's krechzing for Mashiach. Yeah, well, when, when people are doing well, and their business is knocking, and every day the guy is, the guy is, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> shoveling up millions. He's not so, no, no. Not necessarily sitting and waiting for Mashiach. He's kind of pretty happy. He's worried, actually. The worst thing that can happen to him, Chas V'Shalom's Mashiach will come. What's going to be with his business? He's such a knacker now. He's got such a... So, so 
But the Rebbe says, no, 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 no. The business is going to come along with you. And the millions of dollars you're making are going to come along with you. And other Rebbe, your business is going to be so much stronger and so much better. And it's going to, what is going to go away? Well, there are certain elements in the business that are not good. Anxiety that comes along with business. Frustrations that come along with business. The fact that you don't have time for your family and you become completely obsessed and enslaved to your business. So you have no time for your children, for your wife, for, your, for, 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 for learning Torah, for these. These, that's called enslaved to your business. This negativity is going to go away. What's going to remain? A beautiful business. What, what, how is it going to change? I mean, if your business was so important to you that you were putting your mind and, and, and heart and soul 24-7 into it, so why is it going to change? Ah, because then you're going to see the panemius. What's the panemius? The panemius is that not what you're doing is making the business successful. What's making the business successful is the eber shnuz So you're going to realize you don't have to do so much, spend so many hours investing and in trying to figure out. You have to do a little bit, of shtadlers, and, 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 and increase the eber shnuz How do you increase the eber shnuz By being a good father, by being a good husband, by learning Torah, by doing mitzvahs, by davening and connecting to the Abish there. Huh? And then, then everything, that, that, that. so that means the business and your association with your business is going to be liberated. It's going to come from goyla legula. I'm giving business as an example. And the same is true with everything else. People are afraid. Let's say if you're a person that you like eating. No? I enjoy good potato kugel. And Mashiach is going to come. I don't want to give up on potato kugel. Don't want to. I like potato kugel. And I like other, other gashmis to get geshmak azachim. I like sushi. I like pizza. I like, I like these things. I enjoy food. You're going to take it away from me. Mashiach is going to come. People are afraid. Yeah. Who needs it? I don't want it. I'm pretty happy now. The answer is that your relationship, that food is not going to change. When Mashiach is going to come, Ad Rabbi, you know? I mean, the Rebbe doesn't say this in the Sikha, but I'm just expounding. The Medrash says that when Adam Arishan sinned, the taste of food was dramatically diminished. The Pedos, literally, the fruit that, 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 that says the world lost six things when Adam sinned. That's the Vav from the word Toldos was deleted. Vav is number six, six things. What are the six things? Life was reduced that we only live, you know, sh short, temporary, as opposed to living forever. A human being's stature, height, we used to be much taller. Adam Arishan was like from here to the sky. And, and he was reduced and made into a small little, tiny little, tiny little person. And the radiance of a person's face was dramatically, his brightness. One of the things that says was reduced was the taste of food. Moshiach will come, we'll all come back. Now, I don't understand. If we're all going to be so holy and so godly, why do we need a taste of food? What do you mean? So I, well, first of all, you see from here that when Mashiach comes, the food is going to be much tastier. You like a tomato? You, oh, you never tasted a tomato. A salad? You know what it's going to taste like? It's going to hit. So you say, well, uh, can you sign, Mashiach? Huh? No, 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 no. Yeah, can sign. Why? In the world that we live in now, in a world of Golos, where you don't see in Gashmi as the Abish there, so if you taste a very tasty food, being that in the food itself, the food is not screaming Hashem Echad. The food is not saying, I am tasting delicious because this is the Eberster's, this is Tainug Eloiki, the Tainug of Eberster that's sensed in the food. It's not Eberster, it's, it's a tomato, it's, it's, it's a pickle that's tasting so good. I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that has that taste. So then we know, Vayishman Yeshurin Vayivat, the more you eat, and you're into, you get into your pleasure, the more it builds your own ego, the more you get a sense of yeshus of yourself. Shamanta avisa kasisa. Shamanta means I've become fat. Avisa, I became thick. Kasisa, that's what it says in Chasidis. I'm covering up on my neshama. I'm covering up on the abishter. I'm covering up on my ability to daven. That's why that we eat a lot and we stuff ourselves. And what happens? We become less inclined to daven. We have more machshav as others during davening. We want to daven faster. We don't have even have patience to daven. 
And we have less interest in learning. And we have less, less interest in Avas Yisrael and doing we feel more entitled. I want for myself. Our ego grows. That's the way it is today. Because, because Gashmis is not mechuber and attached. But once Geula comes and the Aleph is revealed, so then when I, whenever <coughs> you're going to have a physical sensation, you're immediately going to identify that physical sensation with who is the Makar HaChayim. Makar HaChayim, the Makar HaTanugim. You're going to feel immediately, I, the Ebesh, there is so gishmak. So the time you finished your food, and you're going to feel the, the, the delight. You're not going to feel the delight in the food. You can feel the delight in the food. But your excitement in eating, the highlight, is not going to be putting on the sriracha sauce, sauce and, and biting in and saying, ah, the highlight is going to be, while you're eating, you won't, you, you'll get so excited, excited about the Ebesh there that you will not be able to contain yourself that, that you want to bench already. Because you want to say, and the benching is going to give you such tiny, a million times more than sinking your teeth into the burger. It's the benching that's going to come afterwards. Because it's going to make you even more conscious and more aware of, of God in the food that we're eating. So you're not going to lose your, your, food, your, food, your food experiences and so on and so forth. And the same is true about relationships, friends. Now, when Mashiach comes, the friendships you have now that are meaningful to you are going to continue. It's only going to be a thousand times deeper because the friend that you have that you thought was special because so, 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 boy, oh boy, are you going to find out they're a million times more special suddenly you're going to start seeing things in them that you, couldn't, that you never saw. Because every human being, as like we said earlier, one of the things that was reduced was the, was, the, was the luminance, the face, the radiant face, the radiant light that is in, a, that is in every person. And every person is a different light. Because that's why you have many people. And we don't appreciate. Parents don't appreciate how amazingly special their children are. The children don't see in their parents what the parents are. It's almost like, if I can say, golos is like we're drugged up. Imagine you get a drug which makes you like three, three quarters sleepy. You're hardly, like, so we're, 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 we're almost drugged up. Or when you go to the dentist and they numb your mouth. What do you feel? So imagine someone who had a numb mouth all his life. For many years, literally, his mouth was swollen and numb, he didn't really taste. Like, you know, when you come right after you got a shot from the dentist. And you tell him that what? Ah, that soon the numbness is going to wear off. He says, no, 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 I don't want to change. I want to hold on. What do you want to hold on? You want to hold on to numbness? Numbness is not a It's nothing. Numbness is, means dead. Have, what's numb? Numb means not alive. I mean, obviously, when you're having an operation, you need to be numb because or else, chas the pain will be too strong. But you don't want the numbness. All that Gullus is giving us is numbness. So the numbness will go away. And so you're going to have everything you have before. Just not being numb. So if you, if you love music, you're going to love music so much more. And you're going to have so much. And your talent in music is going to be so much richer. Obviously, today's days, because the Abishter is not revealed in things, so we can misuse it. For food, for instance, two things. We can eat things that are not kosher or not perfectly kosher because we're not seeing the Eberster in the food and so on and so forth. And also, we can, eat, we can abuse food, eat too much, which isn't healthy for us. Or we can eat foods that are not healthy and, and, and want it. When Mashiach comes, no one's going to no want to eat that. So things that are not healthy because you're going to appreciate what food really is. It's, it's, it's fuel for your body. And again, it's not that it's not tasty. It's tasty. And Adarab, it's an opportunity through the taste to experience the deliciousness of the Abish there. And in the days of Mashiach, that's not a problem. That's the idea. So I, I, I'm Dafka discussing this at greater length because sometimes we say just, Gaila Gaula, Gaila Gaula, put the Aleph into Gaila Gaula, understand the richness of what the Rebbe is saying. The Rebbe is saying that everything you like in your life and everything that's good, you get to keep. But not just do you get to keep it. You get, it to, you get to experience it 100%. And more than that, you don't get to experience anything 100%. Because really the, the underlying reality of everything is the infinite. So we will grow and grow and grow and grow. And the experiences will get deeper and deeper and stronger and richer and more delightful. It's like learning Parsha. You can learn Parsha Sashavua, where you learned it when you're three years old. 
You can learn the Parsha when you learn it when you're six years old. You can learn the Parsha when you're hearing it when you're 10, 11. You learn the Parsha when you're 15 and you're learning Chassidus and you're learning the and you say, ah, it's the same story, but it's so much, it's so much lichtiker, it's so much like this. And the same thing is going to be about everything in life. And that's the liberation of Golos. Things aren't blocked anymore. Okay. And the Rebbe says, well, this is, and this is what the Ramma means. The Ramma says, when Mashiach will come, don't expect it to be a new world. It's the same world. <coughs> it's only that everybody will serve the Eberster. But peace and move on, the Rebbe says. I know you have a, a Yiddish one, I have a Lush and Kaidish one, but uh, this is, uh, figure out where I'm, where I'm saying. I'm saying uh, the last two paragraphs in Pere Gimel. Madua Tevis Geula Kailela says Tevis Geula. Why Geula includes Geula with an Aleph? Because the Geula is not Mevatel Da Avoid the Begolas. Adarab the Geula in Yana wants the Indian of the Geula La Halois Esachayim Begoila to take the life in Geula and to elevate it. Aye De Shichr Kol and Yana Megolas through liberating all the Yana from Golas and to make from them Geula. By being Megale in all the Yanam of Goyla, the Aleph, the Alufa Shaloyla. Then we remove the concealments in the Yanam of Golos that are covering on its true Metzias. We're Megale the Alufa Shaloyla. The Tachlis of all in Yanam of Golos that they were created. So from the Goyla becomes Geula. Giloy ha emes va ha pnimiyas the Chol in Yanam ha Golos. To reveal the truth and the inner point of everything in, in Golos. And all the effects. For example, we've done so much Torah and mitzvahs <coughs> throughout Golos. And a person can be very, feel very satisfied. Look what I've done. I put on, on so many Yidin Tfilin. I built a Chabad house. I built a community. So many people are, are, are keeping Kashras. So many people are keeping this mitzvah. So many people are starting to keep Shabbos. It's Gavaldik. But it's still Golos in the sense that you don't have no idea what it means that these people are keeping Shabbos. When Mashiach will come and the lights will turn on. And you'll understand what means keeping Shabbos. You'll understand what means giving tzedakah. You'll understand what it means putting on tefillin. So then the very same activities and actions that you did in Golos will now radiate with such light and with such simcha, and with such joy and such feeling of satisfaction from those very inyanim that we would... That, 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 that you were doing in Golos, but now they have a whole new understanding because now it's a state of, of Geula. Okay. So the Rebbe says now in, in Dalit, <coughs> he asks a question. This explanation that Geula is Kailela's Geula, that Geula includes Geula, since the point of the Geula is to elevate the Golos, Still needs explanation. Why is this? We understand that one of the things Geula does is it takes all the aspects of Golos and it liberates them. But Lechura, that's not the sum total of Geula. Geula is also going to lead us into a time in which we're going to experience new Giluyim, new Inyanim that we didn't have before. Not just um, whatever we had before, we're going to appreciate more. There's going to be new in Yonim. Especially, the Rebbe says, in Tkufa Shnia, in the second Tkufa. We know that in the time, something that has been discussed in Chassidus, where the Rebbe established that this that the Rambam says, there isn't going to be a Shinoim in Haggish Elohim. There isn't going to be a change in the world that's only in the first Tkufa. But then later is going to come a second Tkufa. And in the second Tkufa, there is going to be a Shinoim in Haggish Elohim. And if that's the case, and that too, Lechura, like 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 Tchias Amesim. And if that's the case, so what that that is also included in Zman Hagaula. Geula includes not just what happens the first day or the first week or the first month or even the first ten years. Geula represents everything that's coming afterwards. So Lechura, Bishloi Metaka, taking the Inyanim of Golos, we're not abandoning them. You're going to take along your, your house. You're going to take along your possessions. You're going to take along, yeah, very nice. But is that, that's not all that it is. So much more things are going to come our way after Mashiach comes way beyond that. So how, why would you call those new events and new accomplishments and new achievements 
Why are we going to call them Geula, which the word Geula is made up of the word Geula? That's the question that Rebbe asks in Siv Dalit. So to understand that, he explains in Perik Hay, a Geval Something relating to the Perkeyavis of this week. Perkeyavis this week it says, Perik Shlishi, it says that, um, who's the one who says it? It's interesting that the Rebbe doesn't even bring his name over here. It says, look at three things and you will not come to do an Aveda. And then the Mishnah goes on to say, what are the three things? Know from where you're coming and where you're going and in front of who you're going to, make, you're going to give a Din V'cheshben. Three things. Pipashtis. Let's, let's analyze the Mishnah second now. Pipashtis. The Mishnah say, you're living in a dangerous world. You're living in a world full of temptations, full of desires, full of pitfalls. We can all know that what? Wow, that's very easy. It's very easy to slip and fall. So how, how can you manage not to fall? The Mishnah says three things. If you will look at three things, it means if you'll be misbeinen deeply in these three things to the point that you can visualize it. Visualize it to yourself. Where you come from. You come from a nothing. Tipa I come from nothing. Where you're going to. Uh, you're going to, uh, the end of the body is going to be in Dere Darayim. Six foot under. Six feet under. And in front of who you're going to make it, the, 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 the part of you that's going to remain is your neshama, that's going to have to make a din v'cheshman in front of the Amish there. So basically, you're not going to pay attention to your earthy desires. You're going to pay attention to your, to, your, to your calling in life. What is my true calling? What does the Eberster want of me? I know that I'm going to have to answer to him. I, I should take my Nadesha body, which is going to end up in the earth, and where do I even have the chutzpah to think that I can spend my time on myself when all I am is I come from Tippus Ruch, I come from nothing. Here you have the Eberster, Melech Malchem, Lochem HaKadosh Baruch the infinite being, he has a mission for me. He's calling out, like it says in Tanya, Hashem Nitzavol, he's standing and waiting that I should do something. And I'm going to say to him, excuse me, wait, I'm busy now. I'm busy taking care of who? Of, of, of what? Of something that, I, that, 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 that comes from Tippus Rucha. Come and, 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 and what am I going to do? And let me say, I'm going to take care of it so I should be happy. I'm going to pamper my body. And in the end, what am I going to do with this whole body? I'm going to put it in the red eye. And then I'm going to be stuck with what? Answering to the Abish there. So what? If you think about that every day, think about these. <laughs> the Mishnah gives us all these good advice. And if we would only take it serious. Imagine if you thought about this. Imagine if I thought about this. If I thought about this five minutes in my life, my life probably would be different. Imagine if I thought about this five minutes every day. Well, I should sit down and think about this for five minutes a day. I guarantee you that three o'clock in the afternoon, six o'clock in the afternoon, you would be, we, we, we would all be very different. We'd be more focused. That's what the Mishnah says. But the Rebbe over here asks a simple question. Why does the Tana have to, the Rebbe's Megala and Indian in this Mishnah that, you know, that has never been revealed till now, obviously, like the Rebbe and everything, he puts on his, you know, when, when we, and the Rebbe doesn't have to, that's the Rebbe's eyes, when we put on the Rebbe's glasses, we suddenly see the whole world in a whole different dimension. Anyways, the Rebbe asks, how come the Mishnah has to say, look at three things and you will not come to do an Aveda. Look at three things. I mean, he should have just said, look, examine where you come from. What does he have to say three things? Why does he have to tell us three things? You can see it's three. Why does he have to list you a number? Think about where you come from, where you're going, and, 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 and in front of who you're going to make a, and you're going to give, give an accounting for, you're not going to sin. Every word in Mishnah, is, Mishnah is written, Belash and Katzer, very short and very precise. So the Rebbe says, we have to read the beginning of the Mishnah, look at three things, you won't call me the Aveda, not just as an introduction to the next things that he's going to say, Dame, Ayin, Basa, but we have to look at, look at it as a, as a concept onto its own. If you don't want to come the day Aveda, if you don't want to do an Aveda in your life, you want to live the life the way the Abishter intended you to live, then you should become aware by visualizing and understanding and appreciating in a very strong, powerful way that there are three things. And, I, and, and basically the mission is letting you guess what those three things are. Three entities, that's what you need to know. That's it, not, not know where you're coming, that's already something else, that's the next information. 
That's not the three things that we're talking about. Talking about first three things. And the Mishnah just know that three. So the Rebbe says, what are those things? Obviously, one of them is yourself. But it's about you thinking about what's important. Right? So you exist, fine. What else should be very important? Not to do an Aveda. There's the Yebish there. There is God and there is you. There is Hashem and there is you. As long as I know that there is, besides me, there's also Hashem, a person can say, I'm good. As long as I have a very strong, that's what it says in, 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 in the Shulchan Aruch, Shavisi Hashem Lanegdi Samit, keep the Abish in front of my eyes all the time. And you can be a tzaddik, that's what it says, that's what a tzaddik is in Shulchan Aruch, it's first even Shulchan Aruch. This is Klal Gadol Bavoyde Satzadikim. So be a tzaddik, no Shavisi Hashem Lanegdi Samit. Says the Lubavitcher Reb, that, that if you think that way, you'll probably do pretty well. If you're thinking Shavisi Hashem Lanegdi Samit, you'll probably do, but it's not excluded from you that you won't come Lide Aveda. Not necessarily. Because Saif Kul Saif, even if you try to, if you, let's say you try to block out everything, every, these gate nicht on, it's not my life, I don't care. The whole world can go jump in the lake, nothing exists. I know there's one thing, there's God and there's me, and I'm, I'm obligated, I need to serve the Ebishter. Other than that, nothing exists. You'll probably do pretty well, because you're not going to become distracted by all the other distractions in life. That can that can you know that can you know pull a person's attention away, but we say no. The Rebbe says, think about three things. There's not just you and the Ebesh there. There's also a third thing, and that's very 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 nagei over here. Who's the third? The third is there's also a world. There's also a world. The world begins with there is your there is your goof that's part of the world. And not only my not only my goof, but there's also my neighborhood, my family, my friends, my environment, the objects in the world. They're very, very, very much part of the equation of life. The equation of life is not just me and the Abish there. And I'm gonna lock myself up in a room be his boidus. That's not the purpose. The purpose is there is me, there is the Abishter, and there is a world. How is this all going to fit into what we're talking about? That world is basically a gullus. That's the goyla. That's the goyla. That's the gullus. Because the world in general is a big yerida for neshama. A neshama that comes from a place that it stood kama malkin, stood in front of the Abishter, and neshama shenesata bitahoyrahi, in that place, just coming into a body and being in a physical world is already a big obstruction. A big block, it's already a gullus. Let alone when the world itself is in a state of gullus, extra darkness. But you have to be aware that that exists. And a yid can say, why do I have to pay attention to it? And the answer is, because if you want your relationship with the Abishta to be complete, your relationship to be complete, you gotta do your job in the world. You gotta contribute. You have to do your avoid in zichu ha'olam and elevating the world. Why? Because when the because to the Abishter it's noigea what's going to happen with his world. Because nesava kadosh baruch hu liyus loydira betachtayin. The Abishter wants to have a dwelling place in this world. He wants this world to become holy through the avoid of Torah and mitzvahs. Begashmi es ha'olam through the avoid of bechol derachecha de'eu of knowing Hashem through the avoid in yonei rishus in 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 mundane things. God wants you to recognize there is a world and God wants you to be very sensitive to the fact that there is a world and that the world needs purification, rectification, education, enlightenment, development, and that I'm responsible to develop it. And I also need it. The Abishter needs it and I also need it. Why? Because when a neshama comes down into this world, through the avoid in the world, the neshama also has an aliyah. And the Rebbe says the aliyah san neshama by coming into this world is twofold. And the main nekudah that is emphasized in this sikha here, in Parshas Achrei Mois, is the second aliyah, not the first aliyah. The first aliyah of the neshama by coming into the world is that the world serves as a distraction. That how does the neshama gain by coming into the world? The neshama, neshama comes into a world and it gets blocked day and night. And, the, 
and, and life presents the neshama with a gazillion types of challenges. And what happens? Despite the fact that what? That the world is bothering me. That, my, that, that now that I can't go to yeshiva and I'm not in school and I'm home the whole day and my little sisters and brothers that are draining me a cup and at home I don't have the same environment of yeshiva where I can throw myself into learning and I have this one and that one and I'm exposed to stuff that maybe when I'm in yeshiva I don't have and now I do have and all the things that are there, all the stuff. And you know what? I have to be a warrior. I have to be a warrior. I have to be a chesed I have to, I have to disregard all of that. Stay focused. Make sure to go to all the join all the shiurim and zoom. I have to join all the whatever, all the all the all the all the all the, all the phone calls, all the whatever, whatever is being used. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay focused. I'm not gonna allow all the meshegas to derail me. Oh, this is the concept of mayim rabim la yuchlu lechabas as ava. That even though I'm going to be faced with Mayim Rabim, powerful torrential waters that are going to come from all sides and are going to try to slap me around and flip me over and get me wet and drown me again and again. And sometimes it's going to feel like I'm drowning and I've been overpowered, but yet I'm going to pick myself up and hop back onto my surfing board and surf the waves. I'm not going to allow myself to go under. I'm going to fight that battle. And through that, guess what? You tap, you bring forth koiches nelomim, incredible powers of Yenishama that otherwise you would have not have felt. And why did you feel them? And how do you express them? Because you're being challenged. Awesome. That's the aliyah that comes from being in the world. But then, it doesn't mean that the world is contributing to my aliyah. It's not withstanding, it's despite the world. Because of the challenge, because I had to fight, I became stronger. But then the Rebbe says it's even deeper than that. Because as much as I can have a relationship with the Ebersh there, without the world, as great as that relationship will be, I will never experience God alone. I will never experience the Ebersh there the way the Ebersh there truly is. Atzmus Samohus, Hashem's very essence. I, if, if I'm in Gan Eden, if I'm in a place where I, all I do is I sit in the Sifta de Rikia, I'm sitting in the heavenly academy and I'm going from spiritual level to spiritual level. And I'm having teacher after teacher teaching me and who knows who, Rabbi Shimon Ba Yochai, Rabbi Akiva, and all the, all the Rabbeim and the Baal Shem Tov, and everybody's teaching me and so on and so forth as a Nisham in, 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 in heaven. I can, I can soar and connect and connect. I will never, ever, ever come face to face with the Ebishter himself. Because... In the upper realms, all there is is giluyim. There's revelations of Hashem. There's no atzmos. Where is atzmos revealed? Only where atzmos, meaning the essence of Hashem, where is he revealed? Only in, in a home. A person reveals his essence in his home. And where does Hashem want to have his home? Bishloi shadavarim. Three things. Not just you and, and, the, and you and the Abishta. There is also a concrete physical world. That's where God wants to have a home, and that's where you are going to come face to face with the Abishter himself. Atmos, and therefore the deepest connection, the aliyah that you're going to have is to have the truest relationship with the Abishter, Dafka, through the world and within the world. Dafka by you, by us organizing the world around us to be according to the way that Hashem wants to be comfortable, that Hashem can live in it. So therefore, by not ignoring the world, but by paying attention that there is a world and I need to fix it and I need to make it and that this is the biggest opportunity, a not to bully day Avera, I won't even come to the possibility of an Avera. Let me explain to you why for a moment. If my Avera is an Avera where I'm ignoring the world and all I care about is only, only my relationship with Hashem, davening, learning, davening, learning, davening, learning, davening, learning. Of course, I do mitzvahs too, as much, as much bare minimum of what I need to do with piyotzeh. But the whole thing is Ebershter, I'm just attached, that state of dveikas to the Ebershter. Soif Kosoif, it's always possible that I can do an Avera. Because Soif Kosoif, I am living in a world, the world exists, and I'm living in that world, I'm just ignoring it. But it will get me. Here and there, you know, you know, no, chatz But if, I embrace the world and I bring that into the relationship. That too becomes part of, part of the equation. Then the world stops being a distraction because I redefine it. The world is a hechetimtza. 
The world is a possibility. The world is my instrument. The world itself is instrumental in me becoming connected to the Abishter with the deepest, highest connection. So, what, but, but what does that mean? The Rebbe says. Now, this all this teaches you is that, that what? When we say when Mashiach will come, there's going to be first one level and then another level, and then we're going to go higher to unbelievable. What does that mean? We're on our way to connect to the essence of Hashem, Giluy of Atzmas. And where is Giluy of Atzmas going to come? As a result of what? As a result of Dira B'tach Toinim. What does Dira B'tach Toinim mean? Revealing the Aleph in the Golas. By us revealing the Aleph in Gaila, which is Dira B'tach Toinim, through that, you experience Giluy of Atzmas Mamish. Comes out, the Rebbe says, that in the word Geula, which means redeeming the Goyla, it includes everything that's going to be Yemois Mashiach. Everything. Because even the highest revelations and the deepest stuff that's going to be Yemois Mashiach are so so self related to our Avoida Bizman HaGolas. To our Avoida in the here and the now. And the fact that we in daily, everyday life, right now, during coronavirus, during during the time of what we call uh, of, of uh, isolation or whatever else it's called, a new uh, quarantine. How do I live? How do I live? How do I live during this time? The lights have not yet been turned on. We're still experiencing the last remnants, the last tiny little squeezes of darkness. And will I, will I take every opportunity in every aspect of my life and live it in the godly way live it in the Mashiach way purify that experience elevate that experience that too is serving Hashem no, not locked up in yeshiva when you're in yeshiva in a sense it's only you and the Abishter. no, 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 no you, the Abishter, and your house your family we're far more attached to the world when we're home than when we are in yeshiva. So you can fulfill now is takel b'shloi shodvare much more than when you're in yeshiva. Because there's also a home. There's also a world. And that world needs to be utilized for godliness. And dafke through that, you will deepen your connection to the Abishter in the highest level. So this is mainly the ideas that Rebbe discusses over here and later he reveals it how it's connected to the Parsha, and how it's also connected to the time of Sphira, and how it's connected to Yisrael Ayyelev, the Rebbe's brother, and Seif Kul Saif, what our Avoida has to be in, 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 in Yiddishkeit. I will leave the rest for you to study on your own. Hopefully you gain something out of this overview and discussion on the main Nekudahs of this very important sikha. Everyone should have an awesome, wonderful Shabbos. And it should be already Yom Shakulay Shabbos, Lachai Yolamim.